Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tweak, Test, and Repeat. I'm Mr. Umer, and in today's episode, we'll be going over GPU video encoding. Now, you can certainly use your CPU, and a lot of desktops and laptops, they may use a Intel AMD or a, an Apple M1 type processor. Now, obviously, there's some drawbacks there. CPU is going to be, it, it's going to take longer. Uh, and the quality, it'll probably be as good or better as the GPU, but the raw performance of a GPU, uh, it just can't be surpassed. So we're going to be doing a live encode here, and hopefully it doesn't crash this video because there's a lot going on on the screen here. What I basically have is our stopwatch so we can gauge how long it takes. Down here I have some some videos here and I can put the links in the description. One I obtained from Adobe which linked to another site. It's basically some 4K raw HD video or ultra HD video that can be used by anyone free. So we're going to encode that one. And then I have another video here. It's my wedding video, which was provided by a vendor. It's probably a bunch of raw video footage encoded in H.264. So, and that one there is in 1080p, 1920 by 1080p. So we got basically a 4K and a 1080p image here or video file, and we'll encode them in. We'll see how long it takes to do it using the GPU. Over here on the right of my screen, I have some some metrics that we can use to gauge what's going on. You notice that I have the CPU, the memory, the disk. You got some Wi-Fi and the GPU usage. So basically, when we start this test, you're going to see the the usage spike up. You already can see it already. The GPU is being used, obviously, because Right now, I'm I'm encoding some video uh, by recording what I'm doing here now. So that's already using. Looks like it's using about 20% on average of, of my GPU. So that's using the Windows Task Manager. Right below it, I have the MSI Afterburner. It's some overclocking software. Uh, my GPU is being overclocked right now. It's got a overclock of 90, plus 90 on the on the core, so that's going to give it a little bit of boost there. Now you can run this test at stock settings if you wanted to, but I use this for gaming, content creation, programming, etc. And what's good about the MSI Afterburner is you can basically see what the GPU clock and memory speeds are running at, the voltage. Also the the fan speeds and the temperature and the voltage and core clock overclocks are shown there too. The last tool I have here is HW64. So this is kind of an all around PC metric type software. So basically it's gonna be measuring the everything about your CPU, your GPU, your hard drive, everything. So it, it's pretty much a pretty good tool that shows everything that's going on, even down to, you know, how much your CPU is being loaded on the cores and your GPUs as well, and how much power my machine's consuming. So I'm going to go ahead, go right into the test. Here's our first test. I'm going to take the 4K RAW, drop it in Handbrake. So in, in Handbrake, I'm going to take this H.264 4K raw video. I'm going to encode it using NVIDIA's uh, NVEC encoder. So that's basically going to use the GPU. It's going to encode it in H.265 at 60 frames per second. Now the original here we can see if you check the properties uh, for this 4K raw uh, it was encoded at obviously 3840 by 2160 which is 4K at 30 frames per second. So we'll be 
doing the same but encoding it in H.265 4K at 60 frames per second. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that and let's see what or how long it takes the GPU to do this function here. It's going to save it as MK, M4V but you can rename it to MP4. It's the same thing. So I'll start to encode. I'll start the clock here. It's always good to have the stopwatch on at the same time. Obviously, if you look here, the encoding software is going to tell you how long it's uh, it should take, estimated, saying 3 minutes and 30 seconds. But then it shows you the elapsed time. So there could be a lot of things that go on that delay the the timing you know here's the estimated time and how long it actually took so uh, and then we have our stopwatch to back it up as well so you'll notice that if you look at this handbrake here it shows the encoding pass pass one of one uh, it's taking saying that it's 18 to 19 percent done um, and it's going at a frame rate of almost 60 frames per second so and that's doing this 4K video. Maybe in another video, I'll, I'll test, I'll do the same test doing maybe 8K or 12K raw video. And let's see, you know, let's throw a, a pretty big GPU workload at and see what happens or how long it takes. So if you haven't used Handbrake, it's a pretty good software. It's a free software that you can download. I believe it's uh, from... Uh, a French software we can check here help about but I'll put the link to where you can download it uh, in the comment section or in the description but as you can see here if I go to the advanced settings um, you know it's got some settings here for your encoding uh, for the video it's got some good options here so if I decide to use uh, the CPU using Intel. Uh, Intel has its own acceleration, its own uh, specific uh, hardware coding that can accelerate uh, the encoding of the video. So does AMD. Uh, obviously, this version is not for the Apple Mac, so that's going to have its own uh, CPU uh, uh, encoding as well. Obviously, in my opinion. The Apple M1 is not going to be able to do that. It's going to, it's going to be really slow. Um, and I'll put a, a link to a, another video. Another YouTuber basically took the Apple M1, encoded something similar here, uh, that, which will be in my second test. The broadcaster or the YouTuber took a 1080p file, uh, which is about an hour long. I believe it was an episode that he had done. Uh, and he did several tests too, but... You know that the 1080p file, I believe it, instead of um, taking him uh, maybe two and a half hours on the Apple Intel version, it took him about uh, maybe about an hour. So he saved some time there. Um, obviously, uh, we can see how long it will take if I when I do my 1080p uh, on my second test. But we're just about finished here doing the 4K. Uh, encode pass uh, everything is looking good so far uh, you can see on my GPU it's almost hitting uh, almost 2 gigahertz which for a GPU uh, of that kind of caliber it's not it's not uncommon but you know if you look at some of the AMD 6800 and 6900 they're hitting 2.3 and overclocked I think I've seen them at 2.5 gigahertz so this uh, 1.9 gigahertz doesn't seem that fast compared to those um, but the main difference here is uh, this GPU has a lot more GPU cores there like if you look at an Apple M1 that's gonna have an 8 core CPU 4 cores being high performance and 4 cores being the um, the energy saving cores, right? So if I compared that to an Intel CPU, uh, for example, the one I have here is an i9-9900K. It's eight core as well, but it has uh, multi-threading. So basically on a 
Apple M1, it, it'll be executing one thread, uh, you know, per core. But for my CPU, it's going to be executing two threads uh, per core. So you can think of the threads as tasks. So basically, I'm doing two times the work uh, that the Apple would be doing. Now, obviously, Apple is a little bit different. It's using an, an ARM type architecture and Intel is using x86 which is also different um, but you can kind of see the subtle differences here this 4k we finished it it took about you know around four minutes for a video that's um, let's check how long this video is here that video is a roughly a 10 minute video um, and we can kind of see, you know, here's the uh, original raw file. If we play it. Okay. Quiet on set. Cut. Your whole action, do all your lines. Okay. That's a pretty clean file. So now let's see what it looks like when we play the uh, encoded file. Do we have sound? warehouse and there is this guy he was a maniac in so pretty decent quality uh, between the h264 versus the h265 uh, file size you're looking at uh, the original one mp4 h264 at one gig compressed uh, and that's at 30 frames you know when I did h265 this is 60 frames and it's at about one 1.09 gig so if you had changed some of the quality settings, maybe 30 frames per second, this could be an actually a, a smaller file, right? So that's it for that test there. Uh, the next test is, okay, well, you know, 4K, 8K, 12K, those are pretty high resolution. Uh, you know, that's something that you'd see on a, on, a, on a professional video, right? It's not uncommon. You can stream that on YouTube. But the more common ones you'll see is like... Um, something you'd stream from uh, YouTube or Twitch or whatever, and that's going to be 1080p. Uh, most machines are going to be be running 1080p. You know, 4K is a, nice to have. It's a lot better video, but a lot of devices like iPads, 13-inch uh, uh, Apple M1s, you know, HP laptops, Dell laptops, they're, they're probably going to have a 13, 14, 15-inch screen. Obviously, if you have the larger screen, 17 or 15 or 16, the uh, you know, you're going to be paying more for those. The average user might even have a, a, a phone screen, which is even even smaller than that, right? So let's jump right in. Let's reset this clock. And let's see. Let's drag and drop the uh, H264 here uh, into uh, Handbrake. So you can see there myself and my wife there. So this one's at 1080p. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. NVEC encoder, but I'm going to add 60 frames per second. But I'm going to do this one here. Uh, obviously, it's, it's at 1080p. Uh, so Handbrake's just going to process that also as well. So let's go ahead and uh, start the encode. And then we'll hit the clock here. And most likely, that's going to take a, lot, a little bit longer. If I look at this original uh, H.265 file, that's a... 6.76 gig file, right? So it'd be interesting to see uh, what the H.265 file will be. You notice here that it, uh, I should have named it H.265, right? Um, but, uh, you know, I just took the same file name there. It's it's encoded, believe me, in H.265. <laughs> um, but if you look at the timing here, it's, it looks like the time remaining is around, what, 14 minutes, 15 minutes? So, um, you know, let's see how long we can go encoding this and recording our video at the same time. So far, we haven't had any issues, no crashing yet. Um, but you'll notice that, uh, you know, we, and I didn't check it before in the 4K. Uh, you can see some of the spikes in the CPU. Um, this i9-9900K is rated to run up to 5 gigahertz uh, on a single core, right? And then the remaining cores, it's probably going to run at 4.7. But... On my CPU, one th one of the things you can do on a PC, which you know you can't really do on a Mac uh, unless you have a Hackintosh, uh, 
or some kind of highly modified Apple chip is uh, on an Intel machine, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, is you can overclock the CPU. So you notice here I have an eight core CPU. It's not really being loaded, but I've overclocked this CPU to run at 5.2 gigahertz uh, when needed. And that's all core. Uh, you can do the same thing on an AMD processor. Uh, obviously AMD processors, they, they have eight core, but they also have 12, 16 and what, 32 core, 64 core. So and same with Intel as well. Uh, and those are probably gonna be much faster when you do CPU encoding. Uh, obviously trying to match uh, this GPU, uh, my, um, my RTX 3090 here, um, you know, even though the cores are, are not exactly the same, uh, you know, we, we call them stream processors in the GPU, but it's also multi-threaded. And, um, you know, an RTX is going to have about 10,000 cores, uh, you know, slightly different, you know, ver SIM SIMD versus uh, uh, Intel or AMD CPU might be a, a more uh, a CISC, CISC based complex instruction set chip uh, versus an Apple M1, a little bit more uh, simpler. That's going to be a, a reduced instruction set chip, you know, a lot more simpler, right? Like an ARM design, um, something you'd find like in, a, in an iPad, uh, M1 MacBook or an, in a, um, uh, an iPhone. Um, same would be true for an Android uh, phone. You'll also find that it's using a uh, ARM-based uh, uh, processor. It could be like a, a Snapdragon, uh, you know, used, for example, in my Samsung uh, Note 10 Plus. Um, that's going to have a risk-based processor. So if you want to learn more, I'll probably do a video on this later on. I kind of wanted to focus more on um, not so much on the technology involved in there. We can go into that. that I can go on for days on that. Um, but I wanted to do a video on uh, more on encoding, you know. Um, so it'd be interesting to see, you know, after this is done, you know, so far we got three minutes, 50 seconds on the clock, 11 minutes remaining there. So, you know, sorry, you'll have to sit with me for another 10 minutes while, while we encode this video. Um, but like I said, you know, I'm going to put another comparison video from another broadcaster. You can see, uh, some of his results. He, he used an Apple M1 Mac. Uh, I believe it was a Mac M1 mini, um, with eight gigs. Um, but in his video, he said, well, there's not much difference between eight or 16 gig, right? Or it might've been another YouTuber that did the same thing. Um, uh, because on the Macs, you know, the, you can't really upgrade the Ram. You're pretty much stuck on that, but the Apple uh, or the OS uh, for Apple, the Mac OS is pretty well optimized to keep that RAM in, in check versus um, on mine. I have a PC here. I'm running uh, 32 gigs of RAM. Obviously, uh, on a PC, you can, you can put a lot of RAM. So is it efficient? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's being compressed right now. I got 32 gigs, right? Some of that memory is being reserved or, you know. Um, some of it's being compressed, right? So Windows compared to uh, uh, Apple versus Android, I would say that uh, Apple is probably the most uh, optimized and, and then uh, Android and then Windows, right? Or Apple and Windows might be pretty similar. But, um, you know, obviously on a Windows machine, uh, you know, you can add as much RAM as you want. You know, you have 128 gigs of RAM. Um, same might be true for an Apple uh, Mac Pro, you know, the Intel based ones and be interested to see what the new Apple M1 uh, or M2 or M3 will do in the future. Um, but so far what I've seen from the MacBook Air and the uh, MacBook Pro is that the you got a unified memory architecture. So you're basically stuck with eight or 16 gigs. Now you may want to, you might want to upgrade, right? And you can see in one of my other videos, I upgraded my HP laptop. I, I went from uh, uh, 16 gigs to 32 gigs, uh, you know, and, and there's some speed differences I went to. Um, and you notice that basically on a, on a PC platform, you can do that. On the Apple M1, uh, that's a unified architecture. You're pretty much stuck with that. So if you want to go from an 8 gig uh, Mac to a 16 gig Mac on the new Apple M1s, guess what? You're going to have to buy an entirely new machine. 
So good luck with that. I don't I don't think that's very flexible. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, Apple fans will probably say, well, you know what, uh, that's all you'll need, right? Uh, or I don't game on my computer, right? Or, uh, you know, I'm not going to use any more than that. You know, I don't, I don't edit or do Adobe, right? But, you know, when reality hits and you actually do these kind of workloads, uh, the, the truth of the matter is there's a lot of professionals out there that's going to, they're going to expect to be able to have fast GPUs, lots of RAM and, and a good CPU and not have to rely on, on in, my, in my opinion, mediocre type setups, right? Apple M1 is probably good for, you know, browsing the web, doing some light encoding and, and uh, some, some editing. Uh, it probably has some good battery life. Obviously, on my desktop here, I'm using a lot more power, right? But, you know, I don't care about performance per watt. Uh, you know, I have a nearly almost a thousand watt uh, power supply, you know, and it's plugged in. Um, and I'd like to see some of the uh, Apple M1s go out there and start encoding and doing massive workloads on battery. Let's see how long it lasts. You know, maybe your 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 laptop won't overheat, but uh, let's see what happens when you actually throw it in there. It's probably going to suck your battery life pretty fast, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see that. Uh, in the near future, I may uh, go ahead and get one of the new RTX 30 series laptops uh, and perform the same tests. Now, the envelope in a laptop obviously is different, right? It doesn't matter what vendor you're going for, Mac or, uh, you know, Apple or Intel. It's going to stay within a certain wattage, right? Um, so you might, you might see some laptops that are, you know, high performance. They might be 45 watt, right? 50 watt, even up 100 watt, right? Uh, versus the lower end uh, uh, type uh notebooks you know in from intel you might call it the u series i think the same thing with amd uh and then with, with apple they're going to be using between 10 and 20 watts right uh only way you can really know that is you you measure the performance you look at the metrics and you know every platform is going to have its own um you know as i scroll down here you know currently i'm the cpu is running around 3.9 gigahertz uh I told you that the software also gauges some of my power consumption. So obviously this is this is a wanton amount, right? Uh, in a Mac Apple One M1, you'll probably be using around 18 watts, right? They'll take you, you know, two or three hours to encode your 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 one hour video, right? Versus on here, it's taking me, you know, maybe roughly 10 to 15 minutes at 441 watts, right? Obviously your power bill is going to be higher on this. Um, but, you know, big differences between a desktop and a laptop, but, uh, architecturally, if I, if I did, if I ran the same test on a, on a laptop with a discrete chip, uh, from NVIDIA or AMD, or even, uh, uh, Intel's new, uh, Tiger Lake architecture, you're not going to be getting times like I'm getting on here, but, uh, it's definitely going to be faster than if they use just the, just the, the regular CPU uh, in that. Obviously, the newer CPUs uh, have more cores, uh, more boost. So it'll be interesting. Uh, maybe later on the line, I'll I'll get a laptop uh, from that vendor. Uh, you know, maybe a good gaming content creation programming laptop, uh, and really really put it to use. Let, let's see what the uh, you know what let's see what happens when you when you do some intensive tasks. Uh, uh, like encoding here for content creation. Other tests I'll probably do is I'll probably run some gaming as it, on there as well because, um, you know, a lot of users, uh, uh, you know, they don't, just don't use their laptop to uh, surf the net and program, right? You see these guys here saying, oh, yeah, my 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 laptop here, my Apple one was faster than all, you know, all the PCs out there, all the laptops out there. And I, I see them, I look at them, they're only doing Zoom meetings, right? That's not really a you know, a Zoom meeting or browsing the internet, that's that's a simple workload, you know. Not simple program that goes into the, to doing that program, but uh, compared to what your processor and GPU is using, those are very, very simple workloads, you know. This right here, I would say this is a medium workload. Um, you know, obviously, if you're, you're editing raw video, 4K, 8K, 12K, uh, using Premiere or using, uh, for example, I, I use a different software. I use Corel, and I also use... Uh, uh, CyberLink uh, uh, PowerDirector. So those are some 
uh, CPU, GPU accelerated software. Obviously, when you're editing that, um, you're going to be doing an export as well, which, uh, you know, those software will have its own, uh, uh, you know, hardware acceleration. Uh, but I would say those are more intense workloads. Um, some other, other uses that you might find for your CPU and GPU uh, is photo editing, right? Topaz is a good example. It uses AI to uh, to upsample, and they have it for both the uh, uh, you know for the video and for the photos. I use a different software from uh, Corel uh, called PaintShop Pro, which I believe it used to be its own uh, its own uh, vendor before Corel had it, or it, you know maybe it has the same name. But uh, you know I'll do another video on that. Uh, so basically that software uses some CPU and GPU uh, uh, AI uh, upscaling technology. Um, so you can basically take, for example, uh, a, uh, an image that's maybe 1080p, which is full HD, uh, upscaling it to 4K or 8K, right? Getting that ultra HD uh, without losing any of the quality. So if you've ever edited photos before, uh, that's at a certain resolution and then you try to try to uh, resize it to a higher uh, if you went from low to high you're gonna have some quality loss right there's some pixelation right and the same goes for for videos as well um, if I took this uh, 1080p video and I encoded it at 4k using my my cyberlink software uh, it's probably going to be you're going to have some losses in there. You know, it's going to depend on what encoding you use. Um, but if you're using some uh, like Topaz uh, video AI uh, or even the CyberLink, if you're going to use something that will encode it without losing, you know, it's going to use your your AI, uh, which is you can use your CPU or your tensor cores. Basically, you know, it's got some trained logic to try to maintain the uh, the image quality in there it's going to use some software trickery so i'll probably do some videos on that later um but obviously uh you know doing videos and and uh and photos you know those are those are some medium to to uh, high type workloads versus if you're browsing the web doing your zoom videos uh, watching a movie yeah those are those are going to be i would say low to uh to almost negligible type workloads unless you're you're running like on a phone or something like that that doesn't have good CPU or GPU hardware. Um, obviously, this one here, you know, that, that I'm doing, you might even say it's even a high workload because, um, you know, maybe the work I'm doing is medium encoding to 1080p, but I'm also, I'm also doing some uh, encoding, um, doing some HDR encoding here, um, at 1440p using my my graphics card. So I'm really I'm really beating it up here. Um, if I go to the task manager and the GPU, you can see it. You know the GPU is 97 to 100 percent loaded, right? Uh, and you'd you'd expect it to want to melt down, right? But uh, these uh, you know these cooling solutions uh, are pretty good. You know my on my CPU I have a water cooled uh, solution AIO all in one. Uh, but on my GPU, it's this traditional uh, heat sink and fan. So, you, you know, as my CPU down below here, it's been clunking around at 41 at, at you know, almost full load. Um, full load is probably going to be 5.2, but, you know, let's say that's 75% load. On my GPU, that's running pretty much full load, and it's hit 47 degrees. So, yeah, not too bad. Uh, when I game, I 60 to 70%, I would say that's a, a bigger load. It, uh, on the GPU if I'm if I'm doing some you know some 4k gaming or 1440p gaming so we're pretty much done there took about 15 minutes 37 seconds to uh, to do this one hour video uh, of my wedding um, this one here is the original this one here you know I should have named it at start but this is basically the h265 video here so let's go ahead and play the, uh, the original file of my wedding. A little bit of it, we'll play some. Holy Spirit.
There's a little preview there. Now let's play the H265 video here. Since it is your intention. Two bank tellers. A bank. So yeah. So that's it. Um, you know, I would say it's pretty painless. We didn't have any issues here. So basically a uh, one hour video I encoded in 15 minutes. So um, I'd like to see some some Apple's, Apple M1s do that on their on their chip. I'm not calling them out, but this is the this is this is reality right here. It's going to be much quicker on a GPU accelerated desktop or a laptop. So that's all I have for today. Um, if you like this video, uh, you know please subscribe and leave some comments. Uh, and if you want to learn more, you can read the description on on some of the software and uh, settings that I used here. So that that's all I have for today. I'll see you guys later. Bye.